Hi friends, my name is Austin McCain, and thank you for joining my YouTube channel, Coco Cross Country, where I am going to venture to through hike the Appalachian Trail in its entirety. For all intents and purposes, I'm gonna go by the trail name Coco. And for those of you on here that don't know what a trail name is, when you go hiking for an extended period of time, your trail family gives you a name. And whether you like that name or not, you're, you're really kind of stuck with it. And good for me, I like Coco. This will be one of hopefully many videos where I'll be able to document my adventure in Appalachia. Today, I will be going to be doing a gear breakdown so that you can see what I'm gonna be having on my back for the next five months. Uh, if you wanna know what the item is, uh, the item's price, the item's weight, and the purchase location, all of that will be included in the description uh, below at the end of this video. Thank you guys for joining my adventure and let's go ahead and get started. So the number one question that I get when it comes to backpacking is, how do you manage to get under 14 pounds of weight into a single backpack and then live out of that backpack for an extended period of time? And um, because that was my number one question, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity uh, for this to be my first video for you all. Um, I'm gonna go through uh, each individual item and give you uh, my review of the item with approximately 40 miles uh, under my belt for each of these. Um, I've done some tweaks here and there. I've gone on a couple of through hikes um, and have, have tested it to, to an extent and, and believe that I have fine tuned this for the most part. So uh, for each item, I'm going to, to give you a brief description uh, of what the item is and potentially price and potentially weight depending on how significant it is. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, what we refer to as the big three which is gonna be your pack itself, it's going to be your sleep system, and it's going to be your shelter. So um, in that, I have approximately four items um, that encompass the big three. Uh, first and foremost, I uh, want you guys to refer to um, RE, this is the REI Flash 55. Um, and it is a 55 liter pack, extremely minimalistic, um, and is a small for me. Uh, but what I really liked about this pack, it's really no frills. Um, I, I think the thing, I think what, what makes it the frilliest is, is potentially the pockets here on the side um, that allow me to quickly grab my water bottle and put it back in, uh, and also a little snack pouch down here. Um, I'm able to fit all of my gear comfortably in here with not a lot of excess space. And, um, you know, many of us, especially in scouting uh, as a youth, uh, I would pack my fears, sometimes putting upwards of 20, 25 pounds of gear in my pack just because I had the space there. Uh, and so this pack has allowed me to, to think smart, uh, but also being efficient, right? Uh, through hiking the Appalachian Trail isn't about brute strength, it's about efficiency. And uh, being able to keep the pack under 14 pounds um, is it, it, fantastic. Um, this item weighs approximately Oh, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, it weighs approximately 41 ounces, so just two and a half pounds. And you, you really can't be mad at that when you're looking at most um, backpacks on the market weighing upwards of four pounds. So this has been um, a really great purchase for me and I'm happy with the purchase. Uh, you also notice, shout out to uh, my friend Taps and Snacks, who uh, this year the Conservancy is not uh, recognizing through hikes and so, uh, shout out to them for making this awesome 3D printed tag that I could include on my pack. So thanks, guys. I'll leave this here for the rest of the time, and uh, we'll keep going. Uh, the next is our sleep system. So there's two items that comprise of my sleep system. Number one, uh, I have the Hike and Bike Elios Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. Um, this is actually approximately three pounds. A little heavy for my liking, but... Um, and within the first two months, once it starts to warm up in the spring, I'm gonna send this item back and I'm gonna take my hike and bike 30 degree sleeping, uh, sleeping bag. Uh, that's about a pound difference. And uh, a pound um, while through hiking is a huge, huge difference. Um, this is 800 fill down. It, it keeps me warm at night. I have uh, slept in the backyard once with it. it. It really does the trick. And the nights that it's going to get down to 15 degrees, um, I'm gonna be extremely comfortable. Uh, next, what is comprised of my sleep system is 
um, the, the Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm. Um, many of my, my friends and, and scouts that I interact with, they usually use what's called a closed cell foam pad. Um, this would be an example of a closed cell foam object, uh, but you'll notice that it is, you know, one, one piece and it is made of foam itself, right? Um, whereas I, I decided that I was going to invest a little bit uh, into the product. Um, I will be using a blow up mattress. And um, for those that don't know, uh, mattresses are rated on a scale of one to seven. Um, it's what's called an R rating. And uh, a typically closed cell foam pad is roughly around an R rating of two, which means it's, it's not the most comfortable and you're likely gonna lose heat um, from the ground below you that is probably 10, 15, 20 degrees out uh, in a night in early March on the Appalachian Trail. Um, but this product actually has an R rating of 6.9, so it almost entirely insulates you from the ground. Uh, the only bad part about this product uh, is that it crinkles a lot. The, uh, the ripstop is, is fantastic. Um, it, it, it keeps you warm, um, but also it, it can keep you up at night if you move around too much and it wrinkles just a little bit. Um, but really excited to be using this and really excited to stay warm, especially in the early months. Uh, next, we're going to go into uh, my actual shelter system, which um, I got the Sierra Designs High Root One. Uh, you'll notice this is this is my entire tent, and you're probably wondering where are all of um, where are all the poles at. Um, well, that's uh, really funny that you ask because this is actually a trekking pole tent. So my entire frame is going to be using my trekking poles. Um, it attaches to the top here, and this sticks into the ground, uh, which creates enough pressure for me to have a lightweight system. This weighs uh, just under two pounds, and for anybody that uses uh, a pole system, you know that you're not getting anything uh, below three. So I am super, I was super fortunate to find this on sale. Uh, the only problem I've had with it is that I've had a couple of strings um, actually just rot. And so I went to, um, as I mentioned before, um, for my, um, my sleeping bag, the hike and bike, um, they sold um, some of their, their guy lines separately. So I was able to, to fix that and uh, make those adjustments as needed. But uh, the tent is fantastic. Uh, it keeps you dry at night. You don't need a footprint with it. Um, so it's extremely efficient and extremely lightweight. Uh, next, we're gonna we're gonna get into some clothing, and this is probably the second um, second question I get asked: How are you going to survive with uh, just a minimal amount of clothing? And I think the simple answer is is you're gonna smell a little bit after a while. But there's there's a science to it, right? Um, before I dig in, you'll notice a lot of my gear is made out of wool, and uh, wool um, has an antimicrobial agent um, that keeps you know um, natural body odor to, to a minimum. So a lot of my items here today are made out of wool and not synthetic material. Um, you'll also notice that I use a lot of, uh, I've, there are a couple of items um, that are made with like down. Um, so goose down, such as my sleeping bag and my puffer that I'm just about to show you, uh, which keeps insulation in. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna first start with um, what I'm wearing right now. So um, you'll notice that um, I am wearing um, a long pant, and you'll notice that I'm wearing a fleece top uh, uh, over top of uh, the shirt that I'm going to be wearing. Um, let's start with the fleece. This is a Marmont Rockland fleece, quarter zip. Um, I have a base layer that I'm going to be wearing, and on most mornings, this is going to be over top of it, especially in March and April, uh, maybe even into May as well. On those colder mornings, this, this will keep you, you nice and warm and um, it is uh, fairly light, uh, just coming in, ride it around. Oh gosh, looking at my notes here. Um, let's see, the Rockland fleece comes in, ride it around 10 ounces. So um, it really does pack a punch um, when it comes to weight near, uh, not, not quite a pound, um, but it also is able to, to keep you really warm. Uh, next, you'll notice that I have on a pair of pants, a pair of long pants. Um, this is one of my more recent switches. Um, originally, I was using the Columbia Ridgeline 
um, uh, the pewter color, um, convertible pants, um, but I found that there was not a lot of stretch there and that I was not very comfortable in them. And that this is, if anybody's listening right now, this is why it's really important to test your gear because there are gonna be things that you don't like and there's gonna be things that, that you might have in your pack that you don't actually need. Um, and so what I did is I made a switch um, over to, uh, excuse me as I look at my notes, um, but I've switched over to uh, the Outdoor Research for Rosie pants. You'll notice that there is plenty of stretch in here. Uh, there are a couple of pockets. Um, and what I've heard, what I've really liked, uh, the reviews that I've looked at, at these is, uh, number one, they're not heavy. Um, they uh, weigh just around 10 ounces and wind flies right through them. Uh, and with a nice base layer, uh, such as um, some, some wool leggings, uh, the, these can definitely keep you uh, keep you warm in camp, and also uh, can keep you nice and nice and cool while you're on the trail, and you're you're burning putting a lot of heat into your legs, right? Um, next, we're going to go into um, the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper Two, uh, which this is going to be my puffer of choice. Uh, this is 800 fill down. Um, it is super light. Um, when we talk about puffers, you're like, um, well, that's gonna be pretty heavy. Uh, well, this is only 211 grams. Um, and I'm able to compact this into a stuff sack and I'm able to carry it everywhere with me. Uh, this is, will be what I wear in camps most mornings and probably for the first 15 minutes of my hike each day, uh, just to warm up uh, and to make sure I'm not freezing. Um, my, my Rockland fleece will keep me plenty warm along the way if it's cold out and eventually I will eventually shed this as well. Uh, next we're going to go into socks um, and for all my scouts out there I cannot tell you enough uh, do not wear cotton socks ever when you go hiking. Um, if you're looking for if you're looking to be miserable then do it please um, but I can tell you um, I have invested into um, into darn tough socks. And for those that don't know what darn tough socks are, uh, they are merino wool socks, um, same, same antimicrobial properties um, and um, wicking properties as uh, any other wool product. Uh, but what I really like about these is that they have a lifetime warranty on them. And if there is ever a hole put into them, um, I can go to an outfitter along the way, say here are my dead socks and they'll give me a brand new pair. So um, if, if that is ever a problem, I would, um, <laughs> I'm glad that I have that security there and I'm saving, you know, 20 bucks a piece if, if that's the case. Um, not only do I have two pairs of Merino Wool Darn Tough socks um, that I can exchange out just in case one pair is wet and, uh, while I'm hiking, um, but I also have a pair of Carhartt uh, warm weather socks and I am an extremely cold sleeper, and if my feet get cold, I won't be able to sleep at all. Um, so I'll be wearing this, this large pair strictly to sleep in. Um, it'll be nice because I like to rub my feet together, and that's how I kind of get in the groove of sleeping, especially on a cold night. Um, but uh, these are going to come in handy, um, especially when I want a clean pair of socks at the end of the day. Um, not, not a lot of clothing, but this is one that I splurged on. Um, next, we're going to go into my rain system. Um, my rain system is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different. It's not, it's not traditional. Uh, in this small little container, you're, this is a Yandu rain skirt. I've heard of many people wearing fr uh, frog togs or um, purchasing rain pants or even some sort of like ballerina pants. Uh, but I, I went with a, a small little skirt, uh, a small little kilt that can go around and it'll keep my legs from getting soaking wet. Um, this is something a little untraditional, but I'm really excited to try and it's worked for me so far. Um, next, what we're going to, to get out is my, uh, my Outdoor Research Foray Jacket. Um, I was super excited to get this at an extremely discounted rate. Um, this has a uh, for for all those that don't know, we when it comes to rain gear, there is there is going to be some sort of saturation point, uh, no matter what, right? No matter there is not one thing that is one hundred percent waterproof unless it's a trash bag. And uh, for those that have ever tried to put a trash bag around yourself, you're going to start sweating, and that's what's going to make you wet, not not the not uh, the rain from outside. So there's a there's a good balance of 
what is actually waterproof and how are you going to keep yourself from sweating, right? Um, so this has a really high saturation point on it. Uh, but I, what I really love is there are two ventilating flaps on the side that allow you to that allow you to essentially air out your side right here, right? This is this would be my front. This would be my front right here, and then my side. I have this vent, right? So it has a high saturation point, uh, like I mentioned. Um, like I mentioned, like with a trash bag, right? Um, but uh, you have ventilation here, so you're not sweating and causing yourself to get any additional moisture on your body, uh, which you're going to get wet no matter what, um, but this is gonna keep your comfort level much higher. And then something that's super, super untraditional that's growing in popularity is a hiking umbrella. And uh, imagine I have my rain skirt, I have my foray jacket here, and I have this hiking umbrella, I am not going to get wet. Or at least I'm gonna be the most comfortable out of everybody out there. And um, for, oh gosh, um, this thing weighs almost nothing. Um, it's all right, it's not, not that big of a deal right now, but um, this, this maybe weighs less than 10 ounces. And it's gonna, it's gonna increase my comfort level along the way. So I'm really excited to, to try out some more untraditional methods along the way. Um, let's, let's move on to underwear, right? I know some of you are probably thinking, I don't wanna know about your underwear, but um, there are two types of underwear that I have here. Number one, I have my, my base layer that could go underneath my pants to keep me additionally warm. Um, this is, um, a 250 um, base, smart wool base layer. Um, it costs a little bit of extra money, it's wool, but um, on those cold mornings or when you're in your sleeping bag on an extra cold morning, this is the thing that is gonna be, it, it is gonna make additional comfort your best friend. And uh, especially on those really cold mornings where you're hiking and your legs aren't getting warm enough, this will be my savior. So. Um, super excited to, to add more uh, wool to, to my collection. As a youth, I wasn't able to, to get as much wool just based on uh, pricing. Um, but because of this wool layer, I, I know that I am gonna be extremely comfortable along the way. Uh, and the next piece of underwear uh, is my Patagonia Hydrocross uh, boxer briefs. And um, to be frank, I have thicker thighs and so um, I needed something that was going to eliminate chafing. And this was the perfect product to do so. I was at an REI, I saw it was on sale and I didn't even think that they sold these anymore. Um, I would really like, Patagonia, if you're listening, I would really like you to bring some more of these back because I absolutely love them. Um, they, they hit it just the right length and they're going to allow me not for my thighs to rub together. So I'm um, really thankful for these. Um, it's not, uh, th th there is another, you'll notice that I only have one pair of actual underwear. Uh, and that'll be worn uh, with my pants on a daily basis. But once it starts getting warmer out, um, I will be using, um, excuse me while I, I take a look at my notes here. Um, I'll be looking at my, uh, my Brooks Sherpa shorts uh, with a five inch inseam. Uh, not only are these shorts, uh, but they also have built in underwear as well. Uh, preventive, uh, chafing preventative. Um, I, uh, for all of those dads out there that like to mow lawns, right? Uh, I, I know who you are. I know you're watching right now. You're probably watching with your son, um, you know, the scouting related. Um, but you like to have a shorter short when you're mowing lawns, but and the, the same thing goes with hiking, um, right? You've worked really hard on, uh, on building the, that calf and, and, and thigh muscle. You want to show it off a little bit. Um, plus, um, it, it's going to be hot. Um, there's going to be really cold days and there's going to be really hot days. And this will be, uh, this will allow me to, to keep going, uh, <laughs> and, and not have to worry about, um, right. You can always add layers, uh, and you can, you can only subtract layers to a point. So that's why I have these. Uh, the last two things I'm going to show you in regards to, uh, clothing are my shirts. 
Um, number one, we have uh, our Patagonia Tropic Comfort, or our, yeah, yeah, our Tropic Comfort 2 shirt. Um, I don't actually have a short sleeve in this collection, um, but I do have, um, I do have one really light long sleeve shirt and it also comes with a hood as well. Um, I cannot say how much I actually love this shirt. It is super light, I think just under four ounces, and it, it's gonna keep you cool on cool days and it's gonna keep you uh, decently warm on warm days. And I can always add, for example, I can always add my fleece to it and I can always add my puffer to this as well. Um, I, instead of bringing a hat, I um, decided that, you know, it, anywhere I can save weight and things serve as, you know, they, there is dual use in this pack, right? Not only does this keep me warm, does it not only cover my ears, but it also uh, serves as covering for my head as well. And so I have uh, decided not to take a hat with me this year as well. Uh, next is my bug shirt. Um, you'll, you're probably wondering, why do you need a bug shirt? Well, once you get up north, uh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad, and it's not going to be funny. And <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to do is go in there unprepared. Uh, but also, this serves as a heavier long sleeve shirt uh, that I can roll up the sleeves or I can wear underneath my fleece uh, again. Um, but this bug shirt is uh, the Arcteryx. Um, excuse me while I look at my notes again. Uh, is the Arcteryx. Uh, Helio, uh, right at around a hundred bucks, um, probably one of the best hundred bucks I'm going to spend out of this entire pack. Um, but it is not loose against your skin. Worst thing you want to do is go into bug country and, and have a really tight fitting shirt that can be penetrated. Um, whereas this is a more of a loose fitting shirt. It's got buttons that can be just pulled apart right away. Um, it's for increased comfort. It's also got, um, a ventilation in the back. Um, what I plan on doing with all of my gear uh, following this video is I'm going to be um, putting all of it in um, a, a diluted solution of permethrin. And for those that don't know what permethrin is, um, it is an agent that causes ticks and, and other unwanted bugs uh, to essentially die on contact um, if, if something is uh, covered in permethrin. And so I'm going to be treating all of my clothes that way, I am staying safe from, from Lyme disease and any tick-borne illness that might be out there. Um, so anybody that's going on a long hike and you're watching, please, please send your stuff off to, um, to, to get treated. Or uh, if you know how to do it, please treat your gear yourself. Um, it, it's going to be really safe in the long run. And it will keep your loved ones at ease knowing that you're not going to uh, become ill because of a bug. Um, it, that is the last thing you want is a bug to end your journey uh, through hiking the Appalachian Trail. So now, um, outside of, of clothing, that is it. Um, you'll notice that there is not a lot there and all of it serves its purpose uh, to, to the maximum. And there is nothing that I would add to this pack at this moment, but after my, after my hike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and I'm going to do a, a post um, a post pack review uh, to see what I still have in my pack and what I don't have in my pack anymore and hopefully we can get as close to the original as possible but I'm sure um, I'm, I'm gonna guarantee that there's gonna be some changes along the way so let's get into accessories um, and, and other objects or other items that are gonna be in my pack they're gonna be really important to my success um, one thing that I have found to be uh, really popular are buffs and you may have seen these on Survivor where they have these over their head and, uh, right, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but this is made out of merino wool. And again, a lot of my items here today are made out of wool, not because, uh, not just because of their antimicrobial properties, but also because they wick moisture and they have, they keep you warm even when you're wet. And so this uh, is mainly to be put around my ears, to be put around my face as a windshield. Uh, or to be used as a cap when I'm not using my, my hood over here. Um, th this serves so many purposes. It can keep my neck warm. Um, and I know that this is going to be a versatile piece of equipment that I do not want to live without. And so I'll keep you posted. You'll likely see a lot of this uh, around my head in future videos. Um, next, we're going to talk about how am I going to actually film 
my adventure, right? That, that is something uh, that a lot of people are like, uh, are you even gonna have access to electronics? The, the simple answer is yes. Um, about every three days, I'm gonna go into a, a, a town and I'm going to resupply my gear and I'm going to um, charge my electronics and, and what have you. It, it's gonna be an opportunity for to me to recoup and, and, and get back on track, not only with uh, my consumables such as food, but also uh, potentially with gear as well, eliminating gear, adding gear as needed. Uh, so here I have um, a RAV Power um, charging uh, portable charger. Um, this has charged my phone twice and it's still shown as full. Um, so I'm assuming that this uh, will charge my phone up to six times, which is more than enough um, if I'm going to be going to a trail town every you know, three to four days. Um, but I also have to consider that I'm not just charging my phone. I could also be charging my headlamp or, um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think, what else could I be charging? Uh, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head right now, but um, this could also be helpful for other hikers that are out there with me that might need a quick charge. Um, but this right here is, is meant to, oh, also this could charge my GPS, which I'll show you here in a moment. Um, but I want to effectively document my adventure as best as I can. And the best way to do that is to have a reliable uh, portable battery, which, um, which th this will certainly do. Um, also, fun fact about portable batteries is that if they are, if they are um, in cold weather for too long, they will die. Uh, for any of the adults out there that have had a car battery die in extreme cold weather, the same thing happens here. Pro tip, if you ever have to bring one of these with you, keep it in the sleeping bag with you. That way it doesn't die because the worst thing that could happen is that you need a piece of electronic for whatever reason and you not have a resource to, to recharge that, that, that electronics. Um, inside here, I have a couple of cords um, and I have a RAV power um, charging dock. That way when I get to a trail town or I get to a hostel, I'm able to charge all of my equipment. Um, I did briefly notice, uh, I did briefly mention that um, I could, would have to recharge my, um, my headlamp. And I have a very simple headlamp, weighs just under six, seven ounces. Um, and there's a couple of settings on it as well. But one of the coolest things I like about it is I have a really bad habit of turning on my headlamp unnecessarily and killing the battery. And so there's this nice little clip that goes right over top. I'll show you here. There's this nice little clip that goes over top of the power button so I don't unintentionally turn it on. Um, so a great feature there. Um, but there's one setting, two setting, and three. And that's really all that I need. Um, I don't plan on doing a lot of night hiking, but I would uh, in the nighttime um, when I'm winding down for the day, um, I would like to edit videos uh, within my tent and could use a little bit of light so I can see if my phone's not doing the trick. Um, next, we're going to talk about how am I going to how am I going to to eat? Uh, well, I do a quick little demonstration here, um, but there are three components to my 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 cook system. Is number one, I have what's called a pocket rocket, and this pocket rocket opens up super small, super small. This is, this is my, my stove here. You take your fuel canister and you put it on top. Put it on top. And then there's this little valve here. You can turn it on. You can hear it and And it's lit. You can't see it on camera, but that's fine. And we're gonna exhaust the flame here, and we're gonna set it to the side. But um, super, super cool um, that I'm able to um, keep such a light, a, a light object, and still be able to efficiently uh, cook all of my stuff, uh, cook all of my food. Um, but what am I going to cook that in? I'm going to be using a Toke 750 milliliter pot. Um, the fuel canister will fit comfortably inside of here. My pocket rocket will fit comfortably inside of the pot and the lighter will fit comfortably inside of the pot as well. So I'm able to put all 
my entire cook system into one pot. Um, which again, if we're talking about efficiency here, we're not talking we're not talking about using all of the space for a huge stove like we may have done in the past. But um, the smaller, the better, um, and especially if it you know accomplishes the same same objective. Um, so super excited to have a portable system that I can rely on. And it also comes with this really cool mesh bag. That way I don't worry about the top coming off. Um, I mentioned it earlier, and this is what's going to not only be the, um, the support for my, uh, my shelter, um, for my tent, um, but it also is going to provide some support um, as I hike along the trail. Um, this is the Cascade Mountain Tech um, trekking poles. Um, they, they cost almost nothing on Amazon. Um, I, what I really loved about this is that um, it was inexpensive and I can replace this easily with prime shipping along the trail if it happens to break. So I really do appreciate um, the, 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 the faux cork that's here. Uh, it performs just like uh, cork that I've used in the past and it doesn't rub uh, my pinky. I have, a really, um, I have a really bad problem of using trekking poles and my pinky getting a hot spot on it. Um, so pay attention to your body. Know, know where you, when you're, uh, you're starting to hurt and fix those problems soon and don't just, don't just suffer. Um, this is one of two. Um, the reason why you don't have my second one is because my second one is being used to film this video as we speak. Um, so I am using my trekking poles as almost like a selfie stick to, to record my adventure. And you're sitting up on a chair right now. That way this is a stable video. Um, Smart water bottle. You guys have probably seen these in a gas station before. This is the perfect size that I need to, to refill uh, at a water supply. I have two of them actually. I'm not gonna put the second one because it's a little redundant. Um, but uh, have a couple of these. That way uh, at every water supply, which I'll be able to get two or three times a day um, to, to refill my water. Um, but I'll also be pairing this with what's called a Sawyer Squeeze, which is gonna be how I will be um, how I'll be filtering my water along the way. Um, and the reason why smart water bottles are so, are so, uh, so popular is because the adapter fits perfectly with the actual filter itself. So don't go out there and buy this, an expensive Nalgene bottle that won't actually fit to your filter system. Just go get a smart water bottle. Uh, it's, oh gosh, it's 33.8 uh, ounces, one quart, 1.8 fluid ounces, one liter. Um, it's really all that you need, um, and especially if, if you have plenty of water sources, you don't need anything bigger than this anyways. Uh, and unnecessary weight for an algae. Nalgene probably weighs double this when I can go pick this up at a gas station for a couple bucks. As I mentioned, uh, my filtration system is a sorry squeeze. It's probably the most popular on the Appalachian Trail. Um, some people use this and um, uh, pair it with um, some Aquamere drops. Um, I don't really find that necessary right now. Um, I could be completely wrong, but um, this filtration system, knowing what the water is like in the mountains, I, I trust this and it is, um, like I said, the most popular um, filtration system uh, in the Appalachian Trail hiking community. So I'm gonna work with this until uh, I have to get a new one. Uh, this is my Snow Peak Titanium Fork. Probably should have put this with my uh, Probably should have put this with my um, my stove, but um, why well, you're gonna need a spoon, you're gonna need a fork. No need to have two. Uh, this weighs nothing, and it is a, a great product. I've cut a piece of summer sausage in half and literally eaten eaten the summer sausage out of uh, out of uh, the out of a half of one. Then it, it really makes things easy when you can. Um, when you have something that's a little bit longer that can dig into uh, your pot and you don't have a short stumpy spoon that is, you're gonna have to dig your fingers all up in your food. Um, you're not gonna wanna do that, especially a few days out on the trail. Um, next, I have a Sea to Summit 20 liter dry sack. This will be specifically for my food. Um, and also I'll be able to hang this um, uh, do a bear hang with this um, when I'm out there at each of my shelters that I go to. 
And so I have, um, I, I probably won't use all 20 liters of these uh, for a given day on the trail. I'm going to have about two pounds of food per day. So if I have four days um, before my next stop, I'm gonna have about eight pounds in this pack. Um, when I get to the 100 miles of wilderness, uh, when I get up closer to Maine, uh, I'm probably gonna have to have seven days, six or seven days worth of food to carry at one time, thus creating less room in my pack itself. So um, this, this has kept all of my food dry, especially on rainy days, uh, and I plan to continue to use this. Thanks for the recommendation from Matt Brown, if you're watching. Um, but re really happy with this. Don't really want to get a bear canister, too bulky, um, but I know some places require a bear canister, so I'll have to look into that. Um, let's talk about a comfort item here. Um, not everything has to be low weight, low cost, uh, wool, right? There are also some comfort items out there that we just can't, we, we can't negotiate on. And one of those is I don't want to get to camp and sit on a wet bench or on a wet ground. Um, so I went on Amazon and I bought this, uh, this closed cell foam sit pad. That way, whenever I get to my location, put this down, and I can sit and my butt's not wet. That, that's really what it's for. Uh, but this stays at the top of my pack as you probably saw at the beginning of the video, um, just in case I need it, just in case we take a break. It takes two seconds to take off. So uh, really excited for this. Um, the last two items that I have to go into, um, number one is uh, my toiletry kit and number two is my first aid uh, slash miscellaneous kit. And I will break down those contents the best as possible, but I won't go into too much detail. Um, when you are hiking, and this is uh, for all of my scouts watching here, it is really, really, really important to pack out and pack out all of your trash and all of your toilet paper and all of your wipes. And what does pack out mean? It means put your trash in your pack. Do not put it in the fire. Um, leave no trace. Do not dig a hole in the ground and put it in the ground and think it, it, it's just going to go away. Um, leave no trace means leave no trace. And we, it, we want to be stealthy. We don't want people to know that we were there and we want to leave the place better than what we found it. Um, so um, I have here wet wipes um, that I can use to clean my body um, and to also use after I use the restroom. Easy, easy way, you know, I, every, a lot of people use toilet paper, um, but I've never been one to use toilet paper. I've always used wet wipes. Um, great stuff, and um, even, even consider using um, biodegradable um, wet wipes as well. Um, that way, in case something gets dropped, um, of course we don't want that, but of course, at the end of the day, we want to pack out all of our, all of our, uh, all of our trash. Next, I have a little trowel, a few bucks off of Amazon. Um, you want to dig a cat hole every time you use the restroom um, at least 100 feet away from the main trail and away from water sources. Um, so the trowel is here. And you can't just do it on top of the ground. That's not cool. Um, so be, be, be considerate of others. Uh, small thing of toothpaste, really small, and a really small toothbrush. Yes, I'm one of those people that cuts off the end of their toothbrush just to save a little bit of weight. Um, and then I have a couple of... Uh, uh, I have a couple of picks here that'll last me town to town. Uh, that's really the extent of my toiletry kit. I, um, I might add something here or there, but nothing that I can really think of right now. And then lastly, my first aid kit slash miscellaneous bag. I, I won't go through, I might go through all of it, but um, the extra guy lines that I, I purchased earlier that I had mentioned, these will help just in case any of my, my tent guy lines rot and I can replace them super easily. I think I have like four or five here just in case. Uh, I have a repair kit for my Thermarest, right? Um, why is this in my first aid kit? Well, think about it. If it is 15 degrees outside and the ground is 15 degrees and you're laying on the bare ground, um, you, you that is gonna to try to equalize. So your 70 degree body is gonna lose all of that heat to the ground and the ground is just gonna absorb it and stay 15 degrees. Uh, so having an emergency repair kit for your sleeping pad will also, it is also a first aid item um, that will save you from losing unnecessary heat. Next, I have ibuprofen and uh, acetophetamine, um, probably enough to last me about a month, um, but I, um, I get, Frequently, just frequent annoying headaches and take a quick ibuprofen and it goes away. 
Uh, moleskin, your feet are your best friend when you're hiking. I don't care if you're hiking five miles, 10 miles, or 2,200 miles. You need to take care of your feet, and if you don't know your feet well enough, here I have some moleskin. Uh, this will help uh, ensure that you can eliminate hot spots before they turn into blisters. Um, I have some Castile soap here. A drop of this will wash my clothes. A drop of this will um, wash my hair. Um, I mean, really, this is this is all I need if I am going to um, a trail town and just need to freshen up a little bit. Um, not you'll notice it's really small, and this will last me the entire way. Um, this this uh, this is the Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, this is my emergency SOS device. Um, I pay a subscription. Uh, this is actually courtesy of one of my volunteers that I worked with uh, while working with the Boy Scouts of America. Thank you, Dr. Tim Thomas, uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I uh, was super, I'm super fortunate to have a friend like you to contribute to, to my journey here. This was an item that I wasn't going to get uh, just because of the price, but um, the item um, costs about $300 and costs a subscription of about 10 to 15 bucks a month. Um, to keep this thing on um, just in case an emergency happens. So um, this, this, this item gives my wife peace of mind. It gives my family peace of mind. I can send three preset texts, and I also have an emergency SOS button in case something happens. So uh, for all of you that are worried, um, hopefully this will give you a little bit more peace of mind. I know it surely does for me, and I'm super thankful for Tim Thomas and his family, and I hope you guys are watching. Uh, I also have some uh, Benz 100 DEET, uh, just a small bottle here, um, when I'm going to be soaking all of my clothes in permethrin to keep ticks off of me, but also I'll be spraying this uh, spray, a couple of sprays, um, especially once it starts warming up uh, in the springtime. Um, I also have um, some chapstick, you, you want to take care of your lips, and um, I also have some bobby pins uh, in case I need to... Um, not bobby pins. I have some safety pins just in case I need to pop a blister or if I need to keep something on my pack from falling off. Well, oh, and I'm missing the last two things which I've saved the best for last um, are my two um, pairs of shoes that I'm going to be bringing with me on the trail. And I, for those seasoned hikers out there, um, I bet you're wondering, why is he bringing two pairs of shoes? Well, number one, um, the, the, the legends here. Uh, these are um, Brooks um, Cascadia 14s. Um, I'm super excited to be hiking with these. I brought these on two hikes. They are super comfortable. Brooks are known for their comfort, and I don't plan on budging on, on the brand unless I get about you know, seven to, 700 to 1,000 miles in, and I'm at, a, I'm at a store, and I can't find a replacement pair of shoes. Um, but these, these are going to be carrying the bulk of the load for at least a third of the way. I plan on going through at least three pairs of shoes, um, right at around a hundred bucks. Um, they've got, uh, the rail track, um, um, technology in here, uh, with also some fantastic tread. So I'm excited to get these going, um, and for them to, to keep me up and running. Your feet are your most important part of your journey. So these will definitely do the trick. And then lastly, uh, we talked about comfort items a little bit. Let's talk about shoes. Um, uh, these are the Crocs Swift Waters. Um, these things weigh almost nothing, and not only will they help you in uh, if you have to do a crossing, uh, but these are going to be my camp shoes. These are going to be what I can wear comfortably around camp, along with uh, my nice, uh, my nice comfortable wool socks. Um, to really that way, I can get out of potentially wet shoes, and um, my comfort level is a little bit higher, and I'm ending the day on a higher note. So. Um, with that, that is all I have for you guys today. You'll notice I have a lot of equipment here, um, and all of this comes in um, right at around 19 pounds. But my base weight, um, my base weight is roughly around 14 pounds. And for those that don't know what base weight is, base weight is your entire weight minus your wearables and consumables. So all of the things that I'm wearing right now, uh, including my shoes, um, my trekking poles, uh, my food, um, my base weight comes out to around 14.22 pounds. Um, that is a little on the higher side, actually, for me, what I wanted. Uh, but I know after the first month, I'm going to be sending a couple things home, and that number will be closer to 10 pounds. Um, so thank you guys for joining me on my adventure, 
and thanks for joining me for my first video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I look forward to giving you guys updates.